Welcome to another Handyman Leatherman video. Hey, where is everybody? Oh, there you are. Welcome. We are going to knock out the bedroom today. Okay, to hang the sheet rock, we're using my rigid uh, strip gun. Very cool gun. You could pull the front off it if you need to pull a screw out. It makes work so much easier. And we're going to use my Ryobi uh, router to cut out the sheetrock around these windows. It's a special bit called an X bit for drywall. They're thicker than a standard one, they're tougher, and I don't break them as much as I do a standard bit. So we're going to be using that too. So. Let's get on it, Mr. Ed. The studs marked on the ceiling. Yeah. Well, you're making it easy. On the floor. And the floor, too. You're breaking good, or I can come your way. Oh, if anything, it's got to go your way. Oh. Which that'll work. We can always shim it. You ever run into a problem where a stud is moved, it don't take nothing to throw a board in there and just keep on moving. You got, you got the whole thing? You got working, it's got, yeah. You got <laughs> where's Charlene to help me? I don't know. for the garage door. Check this corner because we're going to come back the other way now. That's a lot higher over there. What? Man, this is just too easy. I'm not used to not trimming sheetrock. Eight foot. Man. I can't have that. This is going too good. says she wanted her wall plugs on both sides of the bed to be taller so she yeah. didn't have to reach down really low and yeah. plug it in. Perfect. What mom wants, mom gets, right? Yeah. Right there. Push it up from the bottom. So you feed it inside there. Just click, click, one more click, and it's ready to go. This has a special mode on it. You can pull a trigger and it does not activate it until you push it pulls in, so it's ready to go all the time. Now it's time to sling some mud. You like slinging mud, Dad? Yeah. You a mud slinger? Yeah. That was my old handle. There you go. Over and out. All the rock is hung. It's looking good. Oh yeah. Now we just gotta reset all these screws that are hanging out. When you go across it, 
they make a clicking noise. We call them clickers. So that's what Mr. Ed's doing. What are you using there, Mr. Ed? What kind of attachment is that? Bell housing. Bell housing. Sounds it keeps good. it from recessing too deep. So we're gonna fix all the clickers. I even screwed off the ceiling. And then we're gonna start putting outside corner pieces on first. So we're taking some thin down drop box drywall mud, all purpose. You see it in the green box at your big box stores. Not too thin, but we're gonna put a thin coat on both sides of this uh, outside corner. Then we're gonna take this metal corner bead, it's metal covered with paper, trim it to where it fits, and then we just smash it right into the mud. The mud is gonna act like a glue that's gonna really hold it on there. And then we got a special roller to roll it in and make it nice and straight and push all the excess mud out. You can see the little wheels on it right here. You just stick it on there and it helps you to line it all up, keep it straight, keeps it from twisting. So just kind of make sure we push it in all the way correctly. Just do a good roll on it to where it smashes those sides in. Then all we do is get a six inch mud knife and clean up the excess and it's ready to go to the other corner. Once this dries we can put two, two or three more coats on it. Now we're going to fire up the banjo. It has a roll of paper tape that goes in the end. We lock one end, we open it up. You see how the roll of paper goes in across the top and back out the front. Now we take that same mud we were using to do those outside corners and we just fill the inner chamber full of this mud. Then I put a little piece of paper on the edge as a gasket. We lock it down. And then we go stick it in the inside corners. Pull off the excess. Now we're just going to climb up this little ladder here. We shove it in with our fingers, line it up as best we can, just pushing the center of it. Paper tape has a groove. You can just push that groove into the center and when you're pulling it down, you're pulling it out, it's putting mud on it. And make sure it don't pull too far from the top. Then we have another roller that goes on the inside and then it has rollers on it too and it pushes it in there lines it up same thing as the outsides pushes out the excess mud so that way we could clean it all up gives us a nice looking inside corner very simple if this is all you have a banjo and an inside corner roller really make up a big difference and make it look really nice then when you run out of mud you just pull your tape back up to the top of the chamber Make sure you pull a little bit out the front because when you're pulling it up, it could pull a little bit out, the, pull the tape back in. So then we grab the same mud again and we fill it up again. You just keep doing this until you got everything taped.
And there you go. We got the inside corners, the vertical ones done, and the outside corners done. That way they dry tonight, and tomorrow we will do all the ceiling inside angles. Looking really good. So what is this wall you're working on? Closet wall. Closet wall. I had the rod here not to move it. We're putting a long rod. This is going to be the whole closet here. So you'll see that after everything's painted. I can go get it. Oh, that's okay. We'll show everybody afterwards. Yep. All right. Let's finish rocking this wall. And we got to mud all the nail heads on the ceiling and tape all the joints. We are putting a light orange peel over this one back painted wall and then we're going to do the same thing on the ceiling because these are all the painted areas everything else is new drywall when you are doing a knockdown texture you have to it's got to soak in so we're gonna do an orange peel let it dry tonight we'll texture tomorrow all right it's kind of hard to see but we've got it all textured getting ready to let it soak in a little bit so I can knock it all down we're doing a knockdown and took all the lights out of here and made a hole right there that's going to be a box for their ceiling fan so it's turning out really nice while we're waiting on that we're going to go back to working on the bathroom now that we've uh, knocked the whole room down all the texture and it's dried about 80%. Uh, We're gonna run our 360 sander across everything, knock all the burrs off of it. That way we can start the painting process. We just gotta pick out a color. As you can see it's getting really dark the airless messed up on me we had to rebuild part of it finally got it going after about an hour or two so we're rushing to get this sprayed before it gets dark hey hey there's light don't put a light in here it doesn't look like crap <laughs> it looks good in the dark
three. Wow, look at that. And then I pull the chain, I got air. Should be the one on the side. Oh, look, my mama sees that. How do you do it all by yourself, on me? Well. Like you did for decades without me? Well, you, you keep working over here by yourself without me, so I figured I could work by myself without you. Yeah. Double down, huh? Yeah. So I got this uh, really nice, good condition ceiling fan from a customer. There's no sense of throwing stuff away when you can repurpose and reuse. And the handy wife cleaning lady is cleaning it off for mom and dad. Don't put that in my face. It's a uh, Hampton Bay. So we got the plug covers on there. Plug cover on over here. Another plug cover. Got the switch, and got this other switch over here. So it's coming together. Now, got to finish the plumbing, so we could rock this room and get this room done too. Rock and roll! Jump! Oh. One, one, two, three, four. Say thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. I need to ride to the hospital.